What's up guys, Dylan Codes here, and welcome to day 10 of Advent of Code 2020. Um, in this video, we're going to walk through the solution uh, for number 10 as I try and solve the problem. And if you find it helpful, leave a like down below and subscribe for more. So let's get into it. Alrighty, looking at the problem here, patch into the aircraft's data port, we discover the weather forecasts of a tropical storm. But before we can figure out whether it will impact our plans, our device turns off. The battery is dead. Problem, the charging outlet has the wrong number of jolts, and it's like volts. Uh, always prepared, you make a list of all the joltage adapters in your bag. Um, each of these adapters is related, is rated for an output. Um, can take an input of one, two, or three lower than its rating and still produce its rated output joltage. In addition, your device has a built-in adapter of three jolts higher than the highest rated adapter in the bag. Um, if your adapter list were 396 and your device's built-in adapter would be rated for 12. Treat the charging outlet near your seat as having an effective joltage rating of zero. Okay, so if we use every adapter in the bag, what is the distribution of differences? Okay, so what I, so let's say we have this list here. So from zero, we need to have one that's one, two, or three. And in the list, there's one, so that's a difference of one. And then from the one jolt, we could go to, I think we could go from two, three, or four, but then four, so that's a difference of three. Okay, so we're just working our way up the list. And in this example, when using every adapter, there are seven differences of one and uh, and five differences of three. Okay. What is the number of one jolt differences multiplied by the number of three jolt differences? Well, let's go ahead and give it a shot. So let's get our puzzle input here. And today I've switched from Sublime to Visual Studio Code. Um, just because, I don't know, felt like switching it up today. Um, and let's go ahead and start with our problem. So we're going to say, with input, nope, with open, ah, input, input, Ten dot txt as file data will equal to file dot read lines and data is going to be equal to oops int of line dot strip. For line in data and then for this one I think it'll be helpful if we give data dot sort and let's see if we print data what do we get print data and let's go ahead and run that okay all sorted so so for example here we have one to two that's a difference of one two to three that's a difference of one Three to four, difference of one, four to seven, uh, difference of seven. Okay, and then our highest rating, which I think we need to include, would be 138 plus three. So real quick, we are just going to say, um, so for our highest rating, we will take data dot append max of data plus three um, and then if we let's go ahead and put that above data here and then if we go ahead and print that okay now we have 141 in the list because the um our device is rated for three higher than the max of our adapters okay so let's go ahead and say uh def get differences uh, get differ and count 
And let's go ahead and say here, um, so count, okay, so for count one, and that'll start at zero, and count uh, three will start at also zero, and then we'll say for i in range, in range, uh, length of data, and we're gonna go minus one here because, and you'll see why in a second thing. I have an idea in my head. So we'll say um, diff is equal to uh, length of i, or not length, data, uh, i plus one minus data, I, and so that's why I did length of data minus one, because then data i plus one will give us the final difference without going out of bounds. And then, so then we'll say if diff is equal to one, count one plus equals one, else if diff is equal to three, then we'll say count three plus equals one. And then at the end, return count one times count three. So I think that should be the answer. So let's go ahead and print get difference count. And I'm gonna remove that right there. So print difference count here, 1632. Let's go ahead and try it. Answer is too low. Okay, let's go ahead and go back and see what's going on here. Um, so let's go ahead and make sure I counted everything. So um, three higher than the highest adapter. So it's reading is 22, always a difference of three. Ah, uh, I think we forgot to count the difference between uh, zero and the very first number in the list. So you can see here, our very first number in the list is one. So we need to count the difference between zero and one. So we'll say, well, we can just do um, data plus equals, I think this will work, data plus equals, um, actually let's just say data is going to be equal to zero plus data. And so this should give us the correct answer, I think now. 1656, let's go ahead and try that out. Okay, there we go, we forgot to account for the very first difference. So part two, so to completely determine whether we have enough adapters, we'll need to figure out how many different ways they can be arranged. Okay, permutation. So if, uh, if every arrangement needs to connect the, the charging outlet to your device, um, the previous rules about when adapters can successfully connect still apply. So pretty much what I think is going on here. So to count the number of ways, it would be for like each one, the possible ways would be like, so for example, uh, if we have the number one, then it's highest rated uh, is four. So we need to look if we go like one, two, uh, like if we have three gaps of one or uh, to the next number or like one gap of one or, cause here we have one gap of one and then two and then a gap of one and a gap of one. But then also this gap of three works. So I guess we got to add all of those up but there's more than a trillion valid ways. Surely there must be an efficient way to count the arrangements. What is the total number of distinct ways? Okay, so let's go ahead and start this out here. Let's say part two. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. So I guess we can start with def get number of ways. And this is gonna be a recursive function. 
So we'll say if, and I guess we'll have to give it a position to start at. So position if position is equal to, now nah, yeah, and the, the length of data, length of data minus one. And that's because, uh, and then we'll return one. And that's because here we have, uh, no matter what, if we're here at the length of data minus one, there will only be one way to get from here to here because it's guaranteed to be a difference of three every time. Um, and then we, we can say, uh, so, so we returned one and I don't like that there. And then we'll say, now we, now we have to do the recursive case. So for, say for I and range, and then we'll start at position plus one. And then at most, we need to check three positions past because, you know, in some cases, the very next case will be a difference of three. So then the, the next one after that would be uh, greater than a difference of three. So we don't need to check it. But there is the case where we have difference of one, difference of one, difference of one. Uh, like we do actually right here. So from one to four, that's a difference of three, but then one to two, two to three, three to four, that's th also three differences of one. So there's gonna be some different numbers. So we'll, we'll check from range position plus one, and then at most uh, position plus three, because that'll give us one and then two and then three, I think. Let's hope. And we'll say if data, and which one will be great? I is greater uh, minus data of our position is, let's see, greater or equal to three. Um, so, okay, so that means we're, and what the heck is going on here? Unexpected indentation, what is going on? I forgot to type in. Okay, and then, now we need to call it recursively, so we need to do, so data, so I is in, So this minus our position, so it's valid. So that means it's either a difference of one or a difference of three. And then, so then from I, so that means then we need to count get num ways of I. So basically what this does is it goes all the way to the end and it says, okay, so from here, there's one way. Now go to 137. So we need to check 137 to 141 and 137 to 138. And then once we're at 138, we have one way again. Then for 136, we have to check 136 to 141 and then 137 to 141. But then, cause we hit 137 again, we have to count all of its ways again. And then 136 to 138, we have to count all of 138's ways again. So, and then we'll have like a total total is equal to zero. And then we'll have total plus equals. So like essentially 35 is now gonna check all of these again. And then 132 will check them again. And then 131 will check them again because it's kind of like multiplying the number of ways times this one here, uh, some combinatorics. So But then once we already get, so if we go, so say we get, we do 136 and we find out the total from 36. And then for 135, once we get to 136, that'll be the same again. And from 132, if we got to 136, that'd be the same again. I know 132 doesn't reach 136, but it would. So we can kind of like keep track, I think, of what we've already found. So we'll say checked and we can make it a, a dictionary so checked is equal to this and then so where would we want to put this we'll put i think outside of the loop we'll put checked 
and then position. So now we've checked the position and that's going to be equal to our total. And then return total. So I just wanna go ahead and check uh, their simple example here and see if we've gotten it right for the simple example. Um, okay, control C. I'll start at zero because that's the topmost level. So if we run that, Hmm, zero. Okay, let's see what's going on because the, the expected answer should be the expected answer for that small example should be eight because there's eight different ways of arranging that. So Let's see what's going on here. I guess we have to check if our number is already in checked. So that way we don't end up recalculating. So we could say if position, um, how do we check? I think we can just say position and checked, return position uh, checked, position and we still got zero why is that and I think I found the answer here in this if statement that should be less than or equal to three what are, what was I doing and let's see we got list index out of range why okay I guess we could just go to the length of data and okay so we got eight for the test answer so let's go ahead and put the original input back in and save that and if we run again oh my goodness that's a big number okay okay and there we go uh, so that was uh, Advent of Code, day 10. A little trickier with this recursive function here, but uh, just to re recap what it does, it kind of goes, it'll, it'll end up burrowing in all the way to the, to the end of the list, and then it'll check the number of ways that you can get uh, from, for example, from the second to last to the last, and then from the, the, from the third to last to the last. So every time we, re we visit a number, its total is added again, and again, and again, and again, uh, recursively until we get all the way back to the beginning. Um, and there you have it, there's day, uh, day 10. So if you found the video helpful, please drop a like down below, and I'll see you back tomorrow for day 11.